Hi everyone and welcome to the next episode of the Explain series with your host Dr. Brett Palmer. In this episode we're going to be talking about genital shingles. Um, so you're probably thinking, shingles? Well, is that the disease old men get? Well, it's exactly uh, that disease and it's caused by the chickenpox virus. Um, so this is going to be, um, that might sound a little bit odd to everyone, so let's go back to the beginning. Um, chickenpox. Most, uh, nearly all human beings have chicken pox or have had chicken pox and you, yes, you can get it more than once before anyone asks. And you tend to get it uh, as a kid. And it's just a, uh, a typical uh, itchy uh, rash you can get over all of your body, uh, arms and legs and face. Uh, lots of chamomile, cam chamomile lotion to try and calm down the itchiness and uh, after a few weeks it's all gone. Um, but what people don't realise is uh, the chicken pox, uh, wherever it's entered your body first, it actually hides in your nerve cell and goes back and tracks back to the root ganglion. That's just uh, uh, part of the root which is near your spine and it stays there and it sleeps uh, decade after decade after decade and then uh, eventually when your immune system has weakened a little bit for whatever reason it will pop out again and it will pop out as a, a rash uh, confined to a dermatome and it can look like um, basically like herpes a, um, a blistery vesical rash which can break down be very very painful, can be very very tender. Uh, you need a treatment called a cyclovir as early as possible to try and dampen it down um, and that is very infectious and so if a child uh, who has not uh, had chicken pots before uh, touches it uh, and then touches their body uh, they will then get chicken pox and that is how the life cycle of chicken pox um, uh, goes around uh, and this is one of the only uh, diseases that has such a, a long as it were incubation uh, period to go from generation to generation around about two to five percent of all genital herpes uh, tends to be uh, genital shingles so how do you tell the difference um, it can be very very difficult and the only real way of doing it is by doing a swab and that's why if you turn to a sexual health clinic uh, if they if the doctor is unsure what type of virus it is, they will do a swab. Uh, but what what are the indications that it could be shingles as opposed to um, herpes? Well, how does herpes react? Well, herpes usually comes about, there's usually a prodrome of a couple of days, and then you get uh, blisters. Blisters uh, break down to ulcers relatively quickly, usually in around about three uh, to seven days. And then after about 10 days, if not sooner, it's all gone. That generally is herpes. Um, shingles on the other hand sticks around for a bit longer and usually if you've got uh, sores that are sticking around for longer than two weeks usually three weeks then we have to start thinking about genital shingles now it's still treated with acyclovir uh, as, a, uh, as the most common um, mode of treatment um, but the doses are very very, very 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 different so with herpes it's acyclovir 400 milligrams three times a day uh, for five days with shingles, uh, it is 800 milligrams five times a day for seven days. So it's much, much uh, heavier. And if an individual is immunocompromised, um, that course is extended uh, until the lesions have completely gone. Uh, please remember, common things being common, uh, sores um, and ulcers uh, around the genitals, uh, which have popped up for around about five days and are gradually easing, is more likely to be herpes. Uh, also have to remember, if it pops up on a regular basis, either once a month, once every three months, even once every six months, that is more likely to be herpes. Uh, shingles doesn't usually pop up uh, very often uh, unless uh, you are immunocompromised. So apart from that, that's what I've got to say about uh, shingles. See you in the next episode. Take care. Bye-bye.